what's going on guys it's investing hustler here and today i have a video with departures capital and we're going to talk about two interesting articles one of them being is canopy growth the cannabis market leader and the second article will be two marijuana stocks i would consider buying today so stay tuned Well, before we get started, I would like to ask you guys to please give me a like. It really helps my channel and it will push me to make more videos. So let's try to get this video to 100 likes. We talk a lot about Aurora, and but this article is talking about canopy growth, the cannabis market leader. So we're going to read this article. Here's the sum summary. Canopy growth is the leading cannabis company in terms of supply agreements secured with 36% market share. The company is primed to benefit from recreational cannabis legalization in Canada and medical legalization globally, which is true. An investment from Constellation brand further provides Canopy with the capital it needs to cement, in, cement its position as the leading cannabis player. Because yes, they do have a five, five billion Canadian dollar investment, which is pretty much what's keeping their market cap at what it is. If it wasn't for that five billion dollars, I wouldn't be surprised to see Canopy at 25 right now, but because of those $5 billion, it doesn't, it has mm -hmm. a support line at $40 and it does not seem yeah. to go below that. Yeah. So what is Canopy growth? Um, well, I guess we all know what Canopy growth is. We mm -hmm. have that. Well, Canopy is a Canadian um, cannabis company. The company aims to be a category killer in the international market for cannabis products. Canopy mm -hmm. sells a large variety of products, including dried cannabis, oils, capsules for both medical and recreational use. So what investors need to understand about Canopy is that it is building a branded consumer product business focused on cannabis. It spends significant resources in R&D advertising to have premium product awareness and placement with top distributors. For example, last quarter Canopy launched a national media campaign in Canada, which included digital placements, brand activations in communities and content creation for its tweeted branded retail stores. Canopy is still the relatively is still in the relatively early stages of its long-term goals. The company is focused on making investments to maximize its growth prospects of the rapidly developing cannabis market. Canopy has invested in its brand production capacity, production variation, and access to international markets. These investments have taken to the form of capital investments, M&A, an agreement with third parties for supply and distribution. So as for most recent quarter, September 30, 2018, Canopy has secured supply-related agreement with 10 Canadian provinces and territories for a total, total annualized commitment of over 70 kilograms per year. The company has also secured locations for retail stores. To date, 11 stores are already operating in Canopy. Canada. Canopy has also secured licenses to sell its products online in Canadian pro provinces. Canadian, prov I guess they meant to say provinces of Newfoundland, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan. So Canopy has 10 production facilities in Canada, and those products are, uh, and, and five continents outside of Canada, which are Germany, Czech Republic, Australia, and two cultivation facilities in Denmark and Jamaica. So Canopy's just all over the world. Yeah. Um, these investments have afforded Canopy 36% market share of all supply agreements awarded in Canada to date. Um, the company generated $23.3 in revenue this past quarter. Although the numbers are still small, this represents year-on-year -year growth of 32.7%. I guess we can move on to the brand, Constellation Brands investments. You want to read that? Totally. So in August 2018, Constellation Brands announced a $5 billion Canadian investment in Canopy growth. The deal gives Constellation 38% ownership when assumed exercise of the existing warrants Constellation has. Constellation Brands is a global leader in alcoholic beverages. Constellation's portfolio includes Corona, wines and spirits. The two companies have been collaborating on a cannabis infused drink for over one year. Given Constellation's experience and distribution in the adult beverage industry, the cannabis drink has the potential to be a large adult beverage franchise like Corona or Modelo. Modelo. Imagine if they created the next Corona, that'd be nuts. Or the next, like Red Bull or something like that. So the investment provides Canopy significant cash to pursue its aggressive growth plans. <clears throat> in, fact, in fact, when the deal closes, Canopy will likely be the best capitalized cannabis company in terms of cash on hand. Tillery only has 100 million net cash, and Aurora Cannabis only has 150 million <clears throat> net cash on hand. This provides Canopy a significant competitive advantage in terms of capital available to make strategic investments, including M&A. As part of the transaction, Constellation will nominate four members of Canopy's seven-member board. This gives Constellation control of the board, which is fair given 
that the company will emerge as the largest single shareholder post deal. This is a game changing transaction for both companies. Canopy was able to monetize the high valuation on its share price while continuing to share in the upside of continued growth <clears throat> in the industry and growth from the constellations in constellations involvement. Furthermore, Canopy has a ca the capital needed to solidify its leading position in the cannabis market. On the other side, Constellation gets a call option on the cannabis market. Market, If the legalization of recreational cannabis causes drinkers of alcohol to drink less in favor of cannabis, Constellation has hedged its bets and should start to benefit. So this is like a win-win for both companies. And that's just a crazy number. The fact that Aurora only has 150 million cash in hand and yeah. took has 100 million cash in hand and then Canopy has 5 billion. That's yeah that's crazy that's that's yeah. that just shows that they do have a huge advantage and that's literally the only reason why canopy is um at the share prices they're at now and but i canopy has the biggest market cap i think compared to yeah. even compared to tilray what's Tilray? Uh, yeah compare those two i'm not sure exactly so Tilray's market cap is, uh, I think, no, it's, uh, yeah, it is. It's at 10 billion. Canopy's, Aurora's market cap is at 7.9 billion pretty much. And Canopy, where are you, Canopy? Canopy <coughs> at 15.45 billion. So Canopy has the biggest market cap. And that's literally because of that one $5 billion investment, which is crazy. Yeah. So um, market growth opportunities. Okay, let's see. Significant growth is expected in the markets for medical and recreational use of cannabis. So there's a little chart here. So Canada's medical is three billion. Canada's regu regulated recreational is five to ten billion, and then the global med medical can go as high as 188 billion over wow. time. So uh, it doesn't say no specific dates, but that's yeah. a crazy number, especially the global at 180 billion. That would make these valuations seem a lot more normal. Especially, totally. Yeah. So um, that's pretty interesting. So, so this is the the above slide of Canopy's most recent investors present presentations provides market growth estimates for the Canadian medical Canadian recreational and global medical can cannabis markets canopy already plays in all three of these markets in canada the medical market is currently estimated to generate three billion dollars in revenue this year that's i didn't i didn't know it was that high this this year pretty good that's pretty good yeah the canadian recreational mar recreational use market is expected to be worth five billion to nine billion within the next few years which would be really good to see. Yep. And then imagine in the States if that, if they became legal there, cause they have like almost 10 times our population. So, um, or maybe, yeah. So per the same Delawatt study, providing the total market estimate, the Canadian black market for cannabis is estimated to generate five to 9 billion a year today. Canada's beer and wine spirits generate 9 billion, 6 billion and 5 billion in annual revenues respectively. Assuming the significant portion of the black market converts to the legal market and that the, some first time cannabis users enter the market, the recreational market can be as can estimate at five to nine billion appears quite reasonable. It sounds wrong. Um, so the global market for medical cannabis is estimated to generate $180 billion within the next few years. Today, the global market is not that big, but the attitudes and laws are quickly evolving and the graphic below illustrates that the much of the world, much of the world, including most of North America, South America, Europe, and Australia is considering to move to make this, to make either medical or recreational cannabis legal. There are many academic studies and clinical trials that support the medical usage of cannabis for a number of treatments. Canopy has already already has a presence in 11 countries, including Germany, Denmark, Spain, Czech Republic, Brazil, Colombia, Chile, Australia, many of which have either already legalized cannabis for medical use or on the cusp of doing so. Worth no, Canopy does not conduct business in the United States due to illegal federal status. So I guess figure one, the map of countries which are exploring federal legal cannabis access regimes in 2018. So the gray is medical and adult use is legalized and the gold is medical use is legalized. Um, the dark gray is in the process of legalizing medical use, ex exploring legalizations and the, the bronze, I guess, is exploring. So obviously um, Canada is fully legal. Yep. And then there's a few blank spots. I guess, what is this? 
the light rays, I guess, is it's just nothing. But it's it seems like most of the world is is starting to catch on. It'd be yeah. nice to see this this uh, chart become all all gray or gold at least. So Mexico is uh, medical use legalized, eh? Yeah, Mexico is, but they're looking to legalize it recreationally. So that's pretty. There's cool. a lot of people in Mexico. Um, I don't know what is the population. Do you know it? I believe it's like. I don't want to make a terrible guess before I know the number, but I want to say 50 million to 100 million. Let's see. Mexico population, <clears throat> 129, <clears throat> 129 million. So, wow, there's 130 million people wow. in Mexico already. So pretty much out of all those three continents, Canada, U.S., and Mexico, we're the <clears throat> smallest ones. So, Canada definitely needs to expand, expand globally. So concluding yep. thoughts, you want to finish it off? Well, sure. Canopy is a very interesting business in a rapidly growing market. The company is the market leader in terms of supply agreements secured and is best, best, the best capitalized when taking the Constellation brand's investment into consideration. That being said, it's ridiculously hard to assess whether the stock is overvalued or undervalued. Canopy generated less than $100 million in revenue in the past 12 months and is unprofitable if the the stock trades with an $11 billion market cap. We cannot apply traditional valuation metrics to the cannabis stocks because the industry is expected to show enormous growth. However, we can apply valuation metrics on a per unit of production basis <clears throat> and on an estimated future revenue and earnings. I have written about Aurora here until right here in the future article. I plan on returning to all three companies to provide a comparative assessment, valuation and strategic positions relative to each other. So this quarter, in terms of this quarter, even though that doesn't include um, any recreational sales after legalization, Aurora blew it out of the water and Canopy had a horrible quarter. So yeah. they'll actually have a chance to show themselves the next quarter. So that's, I really think that that's, next quarter is way more important than this quarter. It's this guy wrote articles on Aurora Cannabis and Tilray. Maybe we can do those in the future. So 100 likes and we'll do a, We'll do an article. We'll read the articles of Aurora Cannabis and then Tilray. We'll do it all in one video. But anyways, um, two marijuana stocks I considered buying today from The Motley Fool. Since legalization in mid-October, pot stocks have been consolidating. They call that consolidating? I <laughs> call that going down. <laughs> That's and the streets have seen some panic, and yet most investors seem to have forgotten that pot stocks are still sitting on significant one-year gains. Over the past year, the Canadian Marijuana Index has risen 42%. This is a great return, especially when one considers overall market weakness. Yes, of course. If you look on the year, the TSX is down on the year. So for those who enter these stocks at their peaks, I understand your skepticism. It also highlights the dangers of momentum investing and ignoring fundamentals, which is very true. However, the recent market downturn is normal and healthy for sectors in their fancy. So any volatile sector is obviously going to see periods of volatility. So, well, it's just a volatile market, any, any new industry. So now that the index has been relatively flat for a month, it might be the time to take a closer look. The majority of pot stocks have recently reported quarterly results. The two biggest winners were CanTrust and Afria, <clears throat> which is, is true, although CanTrust performed great, but Afria but we looked at Afria's numbers the other day, and they had a very good ratio. I think it was their um, their earnings to yeah. to their what is it market cap? It was a very good totally. Rate. I think that and Afria's ratio versus uh, Aurora Canopy and Tilray. But yeah, we're Afria's looking like the most attractive one, to be honest. Yeah, like the cheapest one. Anyways, so. Yeah, if we can skim through this article a little bit. Best value cannabis stocks. Afria and CanTrust just happen to be some of the best value cannabis stocks. Afria is trading at a PE of 64. Price which to is, sales. Not PE. What's that? You said PE. Price to sales. Sorry, price to sales ratio of 64, which yeah. is half that of the industry leaders. Aurora Cannabis and Canopy Growth. CanTrust is even cheaper with a price to sales ratio of 12, 25.17. The lowest in the industry. Looking forward, their valuations look valuations their valuations look are more attractive i think that's the spelling mistake afria has a forward ps ratio of 6.52 can trust is 5.7 times next year's sales once again this is significantly below the industry leader and industry average so investing in the potted industry is not for the faint at heart over the short term double digit price swings will be a staple of the industry it's a trader's dream and an investor's nightmare if you're looking to get if you're looking 
at getting back into the market today, your safest bet is to look at those who are the best valued as compared to the overall industry. Today, the direction distinction belongs to a free and can trust. So we can read about their quarterly results. I didn't read it just because we've already talked about that. So they're currently 847 <clears throat> market cap at 917 million that's a pretty high market cap um Damn. outstanding shares 103 so they're almost a one billion dollar company wowzers but let's look at the at the past six months they do seem to have bottomed out at seven seven dollars and right now they're at 848 you know I mean, can trust has like I know the sell off we couldn't avoid it, but it's it's always been a good like they've always managed to profit. Yeah, I mean I don't know. It's one of those companies that I feel like people overlook like crazy. And then um, we look at Apria. They have a new ticker symbol. Like Apria had crazy explosive gains. Like that stock's so volatile. Yeah, so volatile. But they seem to have like a nice support at around ten dollars. So. Is it down four point seven percent today? Holy! Yeah. All these companies are down. Everything's down today except for Hexo, which is good because I own some Hexo. Like Apria at ten bucks though, that's not bad at all. That's really good. I wish I sold off all my Apria shares. I held on to three hundred, and at one point I was up over a hundred percent, and. I was like, I'm just going to hold it long because I've already collected so much profit. Yeah, I remember selling at like 100%, but unfortunately buying into other weed stocks that didn't do, t do too well. So it's just like, yeah. come on. Man. That's the worst. When you sell off some nice gains and buy into a new company and then start losing your money that you made. You know, exactly. It's so yeah. like, but that when the whole sector turns down, I mean, it's hard to, Yeah. it's hard. Like when you're buying within the sector and everything's just going down, it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah well at that point we just you just we just got to learn to hold on to our money and wait for those opportunities because we're just so quick to jump in it's like oh i just made money now i gotta put this money to work yeah no yeah. exactly um but yeah that's those are pretty interesting articles we're probably going to make them in two different <clears throat> parts okay if you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to leave us a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed hit that notification bell and smash that subscribe button and we'll see you guys in our next video Bye bye